Lift me, O God, above myself, above my highest spheres, above the thralling things of sense to clearer atmospheres. And grant my soul a glad new birth and fledge it strong new wings, that it may soar above the earth to nobler prosperings. Lift me, O God, above myself, that in thy time and day I somewhat grace thy fosterings and climb thy loftier way. As the mist rises, so do the hopes and aspirations of the many young men and women who arrive here at RAF Swinderby, the School of Recruit Training, to undertake a six weeks intensive training course, for they wish to become proud members of the Royal Air Force. Since September 1982, RAF Swinderby has been the sole entry point for airmen and airwomen joining the Royal Air Force. But before that, back in the darker days of 1940, Swinderby began life as a part of number one group Bomber Command. By the end of World War II, the ground and air crews of Swinderby had forged a fine, courageous tradition, being awarded no less than one VC, four DSOs, 35 DFCs, and 22 DFMs. As present-day members of the Royal Air Force, they will still play an important part in the defense of their country. For the successful recruits, their stay at Swinderby culminates in the ceremonial passing out parade, when families and friends are invited to the station to experience a day to remember.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the station commander, Group Captain Ingleby, welcome to RAF Swindeby. I am Squadron Leader Cod, the officer commanding number three squadron, and together with my flight staff, we've been responsible for the training of the RAF recruits on parade today. The WRAF recruits, as you know, are from number one squadron, and their squadron commander, Squadron Leader Spearpoint, will be joining us for the parade. I'll take this opportunity to mention a few details about the parade. The reviewing officer is Group Captain Steen, who is the officer commanding Royal Air Force St. Morgan. And the fly past will be by a Nimrod aircraft from 42 Squadron from RAF St. Morgan. The aircraft will complete two runs at the start of the parade. The first from south to north, over the top of your heads, and the second from west to east. And it could produce quite a lot of noise, so be prepared. The musical support for today's ceremonial is provided by the central band from RAF Cranwell. During the parade, there will be four occasions when we will ask you to stand. Firstly, when the reviewing officer arrives to take the salute. Secondly, when the parade advances in review order and a second general salute is given. Thirdly, when the Padre says prayers. And finally, when the reviewing officer leaves the parade. I'm sure you realize that today is the culmination of six weeks very hard work on the part of both recruits and flight staff. So please feel free to applaud, especially during the presentation of the trophies and awards. Despite the fairly demanding timetable of work imposed upon them, the recruits have managed to find the time to undertake their own charitable projects. 13 flight, helped the local community by clearing Thirlby Village Churchyard. 14 Flight raised 40, 100 pounds in aid of the RAF Swindeby Medical Laser Appeal. 15 Flight devoted several hours of their free time to the care and maintenance of the RAF Swindeby Golf Course. And A Flight had a fancy dress charity disco in aid of the South Highcombe Children's Family Trust and raised almost 100, uh, 200 pounds for the trust. We hope that your visit to Swindeby will be enjoyable and memorable. Photographs of the parade will be taken by Mr. Morell, and these together with a video of the parade will be available for you to see in the newcomers club afterwards. When the parade is over, Please board the buses which will take you to the newcomers club where your sons and daughters will join you. Please do not return on foot because of the security state that we're living under at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. 
their training, the recruits compete for individual trophies and awards. The Hake Trophy is awarded to the recruit who achieves the highest overall standard 
in ground defence training. This has been won by Aircraftman Allen of number 14 flight, who will train as an RAF regiment gunner. The North Kesteven Trophy is awarded to the recruit who has displayed the highest overall standards of effort, determination and achievement in physical education. This has been won by aircraftman Nuttall of number 15 flight who will train as an RAF regiment gunner. Certificates of merit are awarded to the best all-round recruit on each flight and the WRAF winner also receives the Lincoln Trophy. On number 14 flight, the best all-round recruit is aircraftman Richardson, who will train as a steward. On number 13 flight, the best all-round recruit is aircraftman Paul, who will train as an RAF policeman. On number 15 flight, the best all-round recruit is aircraftman Greystock, who will train as an RAF regiment gunner. On A flight, the best all-round recruit is aircraft woman Cowie, who will train as an RAF administrative. Finally, the intake competes for the Halifax Trophy, which is awarded to the best all-round flight in drill, physical education and general service training. This trophy has been awarded to number 15 flight and will be collected on behalf of the flight by aircraftman Gospel. Eternal God, we know that in our own strength we cannot give the service that we ought to give. So then we ask you to give us what we need to enable us to serve you and our fellow men more nearly as we ought. Give us self-discipline so that we may choose not what we wish but what we ought. Give us strength of will so that we may accept the right however difficult it is and refuse the wrong however attractive it is. In every time of decision, give us light to see what we ought to do, and give us the resolution, courage, and strength to do it. In every time of temptation, give us strength to resist all evil and to do the right. In every time of effort, give us power to do what by ourselves we could not do, and perseverance to bring the task to its appointed end. 
And so grant that, guided and strengthened by you, we may live in honour and peace, and finally enter into your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no man evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour all men. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and those whom you love from this day forth and forevermore. Amen. Station Commander, ladies and gentlemen, graduating entry. On a brisk day like this, I think it behoves me to keep my words fairly short. But I must and I do congratulate the graduating recruits of numbers one and three squadrons on your splendid turnout and your excellent drill today. You're all very welcome to come to my station, St. Morgan, as long as you get there before the Air Officer Commanding's Parade. I'll wager that six weeks ago, you didn't think that you would have reached the standard that you have reached today. But as you have found out, many things can happen in six weeks. And I suspect that you've seen a few changes in yourselves in that short, or was it a long time? I'll also wager that the mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters here today will also have seen a change in you. I think they'll be impressed with your self-assurance and with your pride in yourselves, in your achievements and in your uniform. And whilst on the subject of mothers and fathers and friends and relations, some of you have, I know, come considerable distances to be here today. And I thank you for that. Today is a family occasion and indeed an occasion for pride. These young men and women are now fully fledged members of the Royal Air Force. Like all worthwhile institutions, the Royal Air Force needs and demands high standards in those that would join us. But like all good clubs, it also offers quite a lot in reward, in return. It will offer you, on occasions, toil and sweat. It'll also offer you challenges. It'll offer you continual challenges. And it'll offer you opportunities. And if you rise to those opportunities and grasp the challenges, you, any one of you, can go as high and as far in the service as you would. But you should know that it's your efforts and your abilities that will get you there, or not get you there, as the case may be. And there's nothing else other than that. There are some ground rules, though. Do whatever you do positively and wholeheartedly. Be questioning. When you reach your squadrons and units, you'll find that the Royal Air Force isn't a service of yes men. Always look after your buddies. Common sense, really, because if you watch their six o'clock, they'll watch yours. Have pride in what you do, even when everything isn't going as you would wish it. Continue to have pride in yourselves and the uniform you wear. You've now reached the end of the first steps in your chosen careers. But perhaps more important, you've reached the beginning of a new and I hope exciting life. I graduated from Royal Air Force Swindeby some 27 years ago. They've moved the parade ground since that time. And may I say that I hope that you find the Royal Air Force as satisfying and as challenging in your time as I have in mine. Congratulations to each and every one of you and good luck from here in. Thank you very much. Okay.
as that day that will be remembered for many years draws to a close, we wish all the recruits an enjoyable and rewarding future in the Royal Air Force.